Hi guys, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you everything I have gathered up for having a home birth. Now most of these things are items my midwife has asked me to gather up, but a few of them are things that I just wanted to have on hand. And so hopefully this is helpful for if you guys are thinking about having a home birth and you don't know what to get maybe, you just want to be prepared and know what to expect. So let's get right into this. Now before we get into this video, I just wanted to give the little disclaimer that we are going to be talking about home birth and labor and delivery stuff. So some of this may be a little TMI, and so if that's not something that you want to hear, I totally understand if you don't want to watch this video, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a warning before we get started. So this first thing here is evening primrose oil, and this is actually not for during labor, but it's actually something that starting at 36 weeks, I'm going to be using to help soften up the area down there. I'll be taking one pill and inserting it vaginally, every night. That'll just help the skin have more elasticity and be more stretchy and hopefully be less likely to tear. And so I'll also continue to take this after the baby's born for a couple weeks and this will help speed up the healing process. This wasn't something on the list. It was just something that I gathered up myself. And so this next thing I'm going to show you is actually the more medical supplies. And this is a kit that my midwife had me order. It was about $60, I think. It has some big pads to lay out to catch anything going on. This is a little package of umbilical tape to tie off the cord. There's a little pack of straws, and this is just if I'm laying down and I need a drink of water, and the straws will just help Luke or my midwife get me a drink a little easier without, having, without me having to actually sit up and get some. There's two pairs of these large mesh panties, which are amazing. <laughs> They're super comfortable. I remember wearing these postpartum with Sophia. These are more for the postpartum, but you put one of these on and a giant pad inside and it's going to catch all the postpartum bleeding. There's also a peri bottle and I actually kept mine from last time so I have two which might come in handy because these are actually for postpartum again more. They're for instead of wiping when you go to the bathroom you use one of these to spray gently and then you pat dry because it's very inflamed down there and irritated as you can imagine. So these just make it really nice for keeping yourself clean. I may fill up one with water and one with my postpartum herbal bath. So it might be nice to have two, but I did keep mine from last time. Some of these things in here are for postpartum, and I just wanted to mention that the stuff I'm gonna be talking about today isn't everything I've gathered up for postpartum. I actually have another video dedicated specifically to things I've prepared for the postpartum period and for healing and just making everything easier, so I will link that video for you guys as well. There's a bunch of little packets of lubricating jelly and one bigger bottle of it. I'm not totally sure, but I think these are for when she needs to use the Doppler and to check the baby's heartbeat. These will be for squirting on my belly so that she can use the Doppler. There's also a little ice pack, and so I'm actually just going to go pop this in the freezer when we're done with this so that it's actually frozen when I go into labor. A digital thermometer. This is just for the midwife to keep track of both mine and, and the baby's temperature. There's also a digital pacifier, which I, had, I didn't even know this was a thing until it came in this home birth box. But this is a pacifier that tells you the baby's temperature, which is the coolest thing ever because it's hard to check a baby's temperature sometimes. There's a bottle of antiseptic iodine solution, a surgical sponge with a nail cleaner, and I'm pretty sure this is for the midwife to use before she's helping me deliver the baby and touching the newborn baby and just to make sure that everything's sterile. There's one of these baby snot suckers and just for right after birth their nose is sometimes filled with fluids and stuff and so she just uses that to suck it all out. And it's also handy to have these afterwards for just getting birds out. There's a little empty glass amber bottle and this is I'm pretty sure for vitamin K. I remember giving Sophia vitamin K out of a little bottle like this when she was first born, just for the first, I don't know, week or so, I think. So she'll probably bring the vitamin K and just give me a little tiny bit in this bottle, just what I'll need. There's two packs of maternity length pads with tails for postpartum bleeding. There's a bunch of surgical gloves, just for the midwife to be using, a stack of gauze sponges, and then there's two packs of these pads. And one side is waterproof, and they're nice and absorbent, so you can lay them out and it catches stuff that might happen. I remember when I was in labor with my daughter, my midwife would follow me around with these pads because if I moved to one spot or another, 
she wanted to make sure I didn't get stuff all over our furniture and so I just remember she was really good about following me around and putting these under me wherever I was going. And then there's a plastic mattress protector. It's a king size. We have a queen size bed but I can make it work. And then the last thing in the box is a little paper measuring tape and this is for just taking baby's measurements after they're born. So that's all for the more medical box and so now we'll move on to just the rest of the supplies that I have. The first thing on that list are just a bunch of pillows and we already have a bunch of pillows on our bed, just our regular pillows and a big body pillow that I use for pregnancy so I figured those are always out on our bed and on hand anyway so I didn't really need to gather them up any more than they already were. Some extra cold packs besides the one that came in the home birth kit. I have some ice packs in the freezer already and I'm also going to be making some homemade ones with corn syrup so that they're more like squishy. I have an extra set of sheets for our bed and so I'll actually put on this mattress protector now and just leave it on there so that it's not an extra thing we have to do when I go into labor. And then when I go into labor I have a list of things that need to be done and one of the things is to change our bed into clean sheets so we'll change it into these sheets and they're nice dark colored sheets so that if I bleed on them or something and they get stained, it's not gonna be all that noticeable. I have some extra boxes of extra large paternity pads. And so these two packs are left over from Sophia's birth and I was just waiting to use them with this one. And these are some that another mama gave me who just had a baby and she didn't use all of hers. So I have some disposable pads on hand, but then I also have reusable pads and I use reusable pads for periods anyway. So I have a bunch of these on hand. These are some smaller ones and I'm actually going to be ordering some larger like 14 inch size pads. So those will be nice to have on hand. I have some extra rolls of toilet paper, a stack of hair ties. I'm definitely going to be wanting to have my hair up when I'm laboring because having my long heavy hair down while I'm like working hard and sweating is the most annoying thing ever and, and I'm constantly losing hair ties. So it's a great idea to have some hair ties in your birth supply kit so that you know you have some when you need them and you don't have to like search all over the house for hair time. I have some homemade lip balm and this is peppermint so it's gonna be nice and cooling on my lips. I can put some on during labor just for soothing lips. I remember during Sophia's labor my lips got so dry because I was breathing so hard and so this is gonna be really nice to have. I also have an essential oil roller bottle with my labor blend in it. This is clary sage and lavender essential oil. Clary sage helps speed up contractions and just make your uterus work more efficiently and then also lavender is just really calming and great for so many things and so hopefully this will help keep me calm as well as progress the labor a little faster. <laughs> I also have my essential oil diffuser that I'm going to be running during labor hopefully if I can remember and then some just single essential oils that I'll be using in that. One of them is clary sage again and lavender and then also peppermint. This is just really great for cooling you down or just a bunch of things during labor although you want to be careful using this topically close to when you're giving birth because because this can bring down your milk supply but I'm gonna be just running in the diffuser and it'll hopefully be just really mind clearing and calming. <laughs> I have two big trash bags here and this is just for my midwife to gather up all the laundry that needs to be done afterwards and she can put them in these big trash bags and so these will just be really nice for getting everything cleaned back up afterwards. I have a flax bag here and this is a heating bag that you heat up in the microwave and so I want to have this on hand in case it sounds nice during labor just for heat management. And then I also have a big bowl here that has a lid that goes to it and so this will be great for when I birth the placenta. She can put the placenta in this and pop it in the refrigerator and then it'll keep it until I'm able to deal with it and steam it and cut it up into chunks and then freeze it so that I can take them as little capsules. I'll also have two big bath towels on hand and a few hand towels and these are some things that I'll need to sterilize sometime near further on in my pregnancy when I'm getting closer to actual labor so that they stay sterilized. I'll probably sterilize them and then put them in a, a brown paper bag along with the other things that need to be sterilized and keep them somewhere safe where they stay clean. And then I also have a stack of receiving blankets and these are something else that needs to be sterilized because this is going to be the first thing that the baby gets covered with and, and dried off with and so these need to be nice and clean. These were the same receiving blankets we used when my daughter was born. And then I have a couple little newborn onesies with feet and this will probably be his first outfit just because it's a zipper and it's going to be nice and easy but I have two just in case. I also have a little baby hat and this is actually got a little pink hearts on it. I don't have any boy hats but 
you can hardly tell that there's pink hearts on it and he's not gonna care. So I also have some little baby socks just in case his feet are getting cold. I have some cloth diapers I'll clean and on hand and these are one size diapers that are just all the way down. They'll probably be a little too big for him and so I have some newborn cloth diapers that I'll be ordering, just a few because he's not gonna be in that tiny little newborn stage for too long. But I've cloth, I've cloth diapered my daughter for almost her entire life and so I'm planning on cloth diapering my son as well. I do have one pack of one size diapers that someone actually gifted to me. They just had a baby as well and they didn't use all their one size diapers. So I figured that these would be nice to have on hand for maybe the first week if I just do not feel like doing cloth diapers for the first little while. I figured these would be nice to have on hand and if I don't use them I can always pass them on to another mama who needs them. And then I also have a nice big thick blanket in case it's chilly and he needs extra layers to wrap around him. I also have a bunch of swaddle blankets. He'll probably have just his onesie on and then be swaddled with a muslin swaddle blanket and then if he needs to, he'll have this a little bit heavier blanket. So, And then I also have some hydrogen peroxide and q-tips on hand. This is for cleaning the umbilical cord stump after the baby's born. You want to make sure you keep the cord stump nice and clean and clean inside around it. And so I have these for doing that. And then the last thing I have is a big birth ball. And last time I didn't have a birth ball and I didn't use one, but I've had one for this pregnancy, which has been really nice. And so I have it on hand in case I do want to labor on it. And then I also have a list that I've been working on that's just on our refrigerator. Just a list of things that we need to do when I go into labor, mostly things that Luke needs to do. There's a list of people that need to be called, depending on what time of day it is, because our daughter might need to go somewhere, and also people we just need to notify that I'm in labor. Things that he needs to get out, we need to change the sheets on the bed, we need to obviously call the midwife, get out all the birth supply boxes so they're right on hand and she can get to them really easily. So it's a good idea to just write out a list and put it somewhere where people can see it so that if you're just so out of it that you don't remember what you're supposed to do, you can look at the list, or if someone's helping you, like your husband, he can look at the list and know what to do. It's also a good idea to get your car seat installed early. We already have it installed because my daughter is still using the one that the next baby will use. We need to get her the next car seat up. And then I will also be packing just our diaper bag with things that he will need and that a few things I will need in case we do have to go to the hospital. It's really unlikely and I'm praying it doesn't happen, but it, it's always a possibility. And we're gonna do whatever we can to keep us all safe. And so I just would feel better if I had something packed and ready to go in case that does happen. And so that's all the supplies I have gathered up for our home birth. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And again, if you want to see what I've gathered up for postpartum and specifically, or my minimalist baby essentials, I will link those videos for you guys below and in the cards. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.